Okay, so now that we've gone over all the animations we need to uh, make this pull to refresh interaction, let's take a look at how we'd set it all up in the state machine. So over here in the animations panel, I'm gonna create a new state machine and we're just gonna name this pull to refresh demo. And now for this interaction, we're going to need two inputs. So we're going to need a number input and we'll name this pull. And then we're going to need a trigger and we'll call this advance. And we'll uh, take a look at how these are used and why we've got these two inputs as we move forward. So the first thing we want to do is set up our pull uh, sequence. So to do that, we're actually going to use a 1D blend state. So over here in the state machine, we're going to right click and add a blend, 1D blend state. And this is going to be driven by our pull number. So over here in the input, um, we're going to select pull. And then we need to add uh, a couple timelines to uh, essentially mix between. So to start, we're going to add our idle intro. And if we recall, that idle intro is the beginning or the beginning set of keys for our pull sequence. Um, and then the intro is the end, essentially the end position for all of these objects. So let's jump back over to the state machine and um, over here, we've got idle intro and we're going to leave this value at zero because we want um, this pull number, this pull input, when it's at zero, we want to start or be at these key positions. And then for the other timeline, we're going to select the idle or the intro, excuse me, and we're going to set this to 100. And Essentially, this is going to uh, mix or blend those first keys in idle intro with the keys in intro. So if we go ahead and give this a play, well, first we need to connect our entry to our blend. If we go ahead and give this a play and we start increasing the value here in the pull input, you can see that we're just simply mixing or blending between those two sets of keys. So this is a really nice way to set up that pull interaction. The next thing we want to do is trigger our strain loop. So let's click and drag and add this animation onto the state machine panel. And we're going to connect these with a transition. And what we want to do is when our pull number hits a certain number, we want to trigger this strain loop. Um, so here on our transition, we can add a condition and we want when pull is greater than or equal to 100. So once we hit that 100 mark, we want to trigger the strain loop animation. So let's take a look at this. There we go. So our strain loop has been triggered. And uh, after that, we want to actually fire the arrow um, when the user releases the UI. So pull that on and we're going to connect a transition here and uh, that shoot animation is actually a transition animation that um, moves into our arrow fly loop. And we don't need a trigger here, but we do need a trigger here. So when our strain loop starts playing, you can see that we jumped right through it. That's because we didn't add a condition uh, to wait for some kind of input here. So we need to add advance as our condition. And that'll just wait until we hit this advance trigger um, before it actually moves on to shoot. And so once we move on to shoot, we then want to play through this entire animation and then move into our fly loop. So here, we're going to want to make use of the exit time, which we'll set to 100%. So now let's go ahead and give this a play and see what it looks like. So we can blend uh, between our idle intro and intro animation. Once we hit 100, we trigger our strain loop. And then when we click the advance or fire the advance trigger, we move on to our arrow fly loop. So we're almost there. Uh, the last thing we need to do is actually add the arrow hit and we're just going to connect our arrow fly loop to arrow hit. And this is going to be triggered again um, by the advanced trigger. So once the UI is finished updating, 
then it'll uh, trigger this last animation. So we want to add a condition here, and we're just going to reuse that advance. So let's go ahead and play through this whole sequence. So scrub through, hit 100, our strain loop triggers. We can exit that by hitting the advance trigger, and then we can exit our indeterminate state by hitting the advance trigger one more time. So that's the whole poultry fresh sequence. It's a pretty straightforward uh, state machine setup. I think the most unique thing is the use of the blend state here. So if you've never used it before, that's kind of a good intro um, on how you can use it. And we've got a lot of videos that talk about that as well. Um, we actually have one more thing to add. Um, let's go ahead and name this layer main. And we need to add another layer called trees. And this is uh, kind of something that's unique to Rive, is the idea of layers. So basically I can take our tree loop, and I can just have that play throughout the whole sequence, and I don't have to do anything, it'll just loop over and over. So if we drag that on here, and we hit play again, you can see that our trees and our bush is now animating. So if we disconnect this, it should stop. So we'll pause and play. You can see they're not working now, but if we connect that, then they start animating. So that is the basics on how to set up this pull refresh interaction um, using the state machine. Uh, in the next video, Gordon's gonna cover how to actually take this, the rib file that we can export here. Um, so we can actually export for runtime from the editor. And we'll hand that off to Gordon, and he's going to be able to take and implement that um, on mobile devices.